The infection is loose. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising. This is the Kaiju drone. Shao Industries remote piloted Jaeger drones were designed to remove the human element from combat, threatening to shut down the existing Jaeger program. But they would soon become a threat to humanity when it was discovered that Kaiju DNA was biomechanically infused within their titanium alloy housing and neural network by corrupted Shao Industries scientist Dr. Newton Grazler. Unleashing their destructive power on the humans they were created to protect. I suspect the first thing we will do, I suspect the first thing that you guys all know I'm gonna do is figure out how tall the Kaiju drone stands. Instead of taking it to the top of his head, which would be a logical place, instead I'm gonna go a little bit further past that. Where is he going? To the outer reaches of space? Not quite. I'm actually going to the very top of its spikes. Of course, that will dictate how much clearance you need it on a shelf. So that's the stopping point of where we're gonna stop the Ultra Measuretron 5000. A cool hush fills the crowd. Silence as everybody wants to get a gander of how exactly, how tall is the Kaiju drone? The answer to that, proclaims this reviewer, is 8.2 inches tall. Centimeter wise, we can switch that over to a very impressive 20.8 centimeters in height. Size comparisons, you got your size comparisons, there you go. On the right side is the just recently looked at Valor Omega. On the left side, said that before I brought the figure in, on the left side, my favorite from this wave, so happens to be on your left, the November Ajax. You can see that all the figures are all unique to one another. This sounds like at nausea, something I've mentioned frequently in Diamond Select reviews, but it's still something really to think about, to digest really, if you think about it, because many companies will argue the points, and we've heard this so frequently before, we have to reuse molds to get the most financially out of them. And frequently, not mentioning any other company names, but you'll see figures again and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, reusing the exact same arms, legs, torsos, and what have you to produce a series of overflowing to the store shelves figure lines. Diamond Select, on the other hand, as you can see, none of these figures have anything unique to one another. None of them are sharing the same arms, the legs, the heads, the torsos, anything really. And this is consistent across the board. Somebody yells from the back of the audience, but what about the Ghostbusters? Yes, the Ghostbusters would be an example of a case where Diamond Select have reused their molds, but they're using the same uniform. So I could kind of excuse that. Certainly here, though, is really a testament to the fact that Diamond Select continues to release brand new molds for each one of their figures. Each one of their figures are unique by their designs, their heights, their proportions, and of course their colors. And speaking of colors, every figure, no matter how good it may be, may have a shortcoming here and there. And this is where the shortcoming unfortunately comes when it comes to the Kaiju drone. While the sculpt is good, and this is certainly a figure that I've wanted right from day one, as soon as I saw it in Pacific Rim Uprising, I thought to the back of my mind, oh, I hope there's gonna be a company like Diamond Select that are gonna finally release this guy that I can then pick up one, maybe pick up three, maybe pick up 17 of them, and I can have them all running around, not literally running around. But then, unfortunately, the shortcoming comes. No, no deterrent for me to wanna to pick up more of these. But the shortcoming only to this figure is unfortunately the delivery or lack thereof of the paint. While the paint is good, let me just draw your peepers, bring the packaging in, something we looked at at the beginning of this review. If you look at the packaging, and this is kind of where you see its initial versus its final. In the initial images of this figure, or at least based on what we would have gotten for this figure, you can see some real dark contrasts of colors. Uh, things such as, for example, all these gray areas, 
uh, anywhere there isn't the white plating of its armor, um, all the gray areas here are a much darker contrast, much darker coloring on the box artwork on the back than what we actually get in the figure. It's a talking point that I want to mention solely only because the blue would have looked so much nicer. In fact, it, it does look so good on the back because it's against the backdrop of a darker plastic. It's not this medium shade of gray. If only it could be actually a, been darker like that black on the back is really where you would have seen all this additional veining of blue really show through better on the figure itself. Like it still looks great, something of which we will talk about as we get further in depth into looking at the figure itself, but it's still unfortunately one shortcoming that I have to mention. So despite its little small hiccup when it comes to the paint, uh, a really nice well executed figure from Diamond Select. It's an interesting looking design of a character too because really I'm sure many people thought how could they possibly do a sequel? You know it's inevitable, but how can you do a sequel to a movie where the ending has them seal off the rift preventing further kaiju from escaping through? And they did a pretty good job. A pretty good moderate job of explaining how that could play out and what we ultimately get here is the somewhat threat, although it doesn't really play like the main villain threat in the movie, but you get these kaiju drones, which are an amalgamation of kaiju DNA mixed up with the armature of the Jaggers. It's a really neat looking effect, something that looked really good in the film and for the most part does pretty good here in figure form. Like I said, if it wasn't so much for the fact that the paint falls a little short when it comes to being darker. It could have really afforded being darker, and I'm not really sure why they went with a, a medium shade of gray. The sculpting is actually quite good on this figure. Of course, you got the helmet right here, and underneath all this, uh, you can see, a, well, I don't know if you can see it, but there's even like these little mandible teeth. More the organic side of things, as like the DNA kind of fills its way through the cavities of the, like I said, the armature of the Jaeger. Uh, all this boning and uh, spikes sticking their way through out of the back of the torso, out of the little pocketed areas here of the shoulders, uh, even like sticking out from the front sections and the sides of the plating on its torso. It does really look good. I mean, anyone I'm sure looking at the figure would probably be asking, is it prickly to pick up? Surprisingly, no, actually. Um, there's nothing really on it where when you're picking up the figure, it does feel, ooh, ow, ooh, ow. No, none of that, actually. It's, it's actually pretty easy to hold and handle. Another one of my big problems I thought the figure was going to face, and I'm, luckily, I'm happy that Diamond Select like, didn't opt to do this, is... There's a hinge joint right here, which we'll talk obviously about a little bit more when you get into the posability of the figure. It does have a hinge joint here in the knee, but one thing I'm actually glad that they didn't do was they didn't put a hinge on the hind leg. One thing that's always the case, whether it be, well, it, whether it be like a line, for example, that Diamond Select has released, whether it's been a line that NECA has released, anything that is on a hind leg, often at times they fall into the same trap of wanting to hinge the back joint. Well, that's great on paper, but the problem is you put a lot of weight on that joint right here when you situate the figure, set the figure down on its feet. The knees are pretty good at balancing off the weight of the figure, but unfortunately, the hind legs is really where it ends up taking the most abuse. And often at times, even like the old alien figures from NECA, combining companies and different franchises, those figures, some of my not even super old figures have had hauled problems in which the hind leg has gotten loose and the figure just wants to collapse in on itself. Luckily, it looks like Diamond Select just didn't do that, just left it off. I don't know if it was initially planned that they were going to put a hinge joint right there, if they've decided at one point they were going to, and then last minute decided that they were going to pass. I thank you guys for not putting the hinge joint right there. It's the best thing you could have done to cause the figure the most longevity when it comes to him standing up or it standing up. It still pre creates a bit of a problem when the figure wants to stand, but it, the awkwardness is actually not so much in its hind legs, but it's actually more so in its, in its ankles. 
Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second as we pick up the figure and try not to drop it any further. Um, the coloring on it isn't substantial. In fact, other than really like the grays, a few little pockets of silver, I should say the whites and a little few pockets of silver, there's not really a whole lot of coloring on this guy other than the veining of the blue. But then all of a sudden you get this airbrushing of these lighter patches of blue that are on its forearms and also on its legs. It's small, it's subtle, there's not a lot of it, but that little bit of it breaks up I don't want to say the mundaneness of the color palette on this guy, but at the very least, the coloring just gives you a little bit more. There's a little bit more for your eyes to feast on than just grays and whites. So I do like that as well. Uh, like I said, it's got great sculpting. Um, it's very poseable, surprisingly enough, as well. I, I, I don't know really what I was thinking it was going to be, but it was more poseable. It doesn't seem as limited, let's say, as I thought it was going to possibly be. Love the sculpting of the hands with the very elongated fingers. Once again, you've got that nice vein that's running through each of the fingers. Um, very long, kind of very alien-esque, very xenomorph-esque, I guess. Again, love the head sculpt. These little kind of markings and symbols and stuff like that are still ever-present on these figures. Okay, so let's talk about its posability. Kind of limited, well, limited in the way of the feet, because balancing the feet the way that you have to balance them will ensure the figure is going to stand upright. You can get a little bit more creative with moving them, but then it does gamble what you can then get for the stability of the figure. The further away you spread the legs, uh, if the feet aren't properly planted, the figure is going to have a real difficult time of standing. If you get the feet firmly planted, and often at times it may look like you want to very awkwardly pose the figure, but at least you can get the figure to stand. It doesn't have to rely on standing completely straight, completely straight. Again, I do like the fact that they didn't put the hinge in the back of the hind leg, all of which we've already talked about before, at nausea. So let's talk about its posability right now. His head rotates, its head rotates all the way around, just like so. The arms hinge outward. You can rotate the arms all the way around. You can see as well, as I rotate the arms, none of the spikes seem to get in the way at all, causing no difficulty, no stress for you or the figure in which you're trying to pose. The arms bend. Um, they bend, but they don't seem to have a hinge joint, none of which that I've been able to find. It only seems to bend at the elbow and nothing else. The hands rotate all the way around. They hinge back and forth has an upper torso ball joint. Its legs split out, a forward and a back on the leg. Kind of wish it did have peg holes on the undersides of its feet. I know I say that so frequently, but just so that if you wanted to put it in a little bit more of a unique pose, you wouldn't have to gamble, once again, that the stability of the figure, it's gonna topple over on you. Uh, it does have a only a hinge in its knee. You can't really angle the feet or angle the leg straight. Because there is no hind leg bit bend, there I go talking about it again, the feet can't properly bend. So you'll always want to bend the knee backwards so then it can correct itself by having the front of the, the lower half of the leg angled forward, if that makes any sense. Has no hinge joint there, thank goodness for that. And the feet do rotate, in theory, all the way around. And uh, they also hinge up and down. Uh, there is no toe articulation. I guess it doesn't really necessarily need toe articulation. Like I said, getting it to getting it to stand is pretty good. One thing that you will come into a problem with, which is something that I've actually just noticed I've done right now with it. When you are looking at the feet, let me just draw your attention to it. There's a hinge joint right here. See how that allows the foot to hinge back and forth? But when you are rotating it, you got to be really careful. I've actually just done it on this leg right here. And I'm going to see, there we go. i got to bring it back around. That hinge joint has to stay forward, or it has to be pretty close to the front. If it isn't, there we go. If it isn't, the foot isn't going to be able to adjust itself. So let's say, for example, i just put the figure down here for a second. If, for example, the foot the joint on the foot is angled this way. You're not gonna be able to bend the feet up to flatten the feet to get it a proper flat footing when you put it on the shelf. So you always wanna make sure that the hinge joint is facing forward, looking right at you like a cyclops, and then you can get the figure to properly stand. And uh, despite for the fact it does look 
kind of cumbersome and it kind of looks a little messy from a sculpt standpoint. I don't have much problem getting the Kaiju drone to stand. It's just again a matter of the it's a matter really of just spreading the legs. Once the legs are in place, just want to keep adjusting the feet accordingly. And once those are generally pretty flat, the figure stands okay. Again, tweaking and customizing, just bending it to whatever pose you want to have it in is going to be completely up to you. There we go. Um, it does it does have one problem where the figure is a little on the back heavy side. But like I said, if you can get the feet firmly planted, then the figure should have no problems toppling over. Good luck. And there you go. The Kaiju drone represents now the final figure in the three-figure new release from the folks over at Diamond Select under the banner of Pacific Rim Uprising. And if you ask me... Okay, there you go. Somebody's asked me. If you ask me, I think this is a good way to go out. Normally, when we have a look at the Jaggers on this channel, there's sort of an expectation level of what you normally get to, f or normally expect to find on those figures. Generally, mostly symmetrical. Pretty pristine looking robots and got all the little mechanics and stuff like that. And all the good things that you would expect to find on a design of a Jagger. Then, when you have a look at the Kaiju drone, it sort of throws all of that out the window. What we're getting here is a much more rough and barbaric presentation. It's not quite Jaeger, and it's not quite Kaiju. It's a happy medium between the two. I like the designs of these in the movie, and I think in the figure, it works relatively well. In fact, if anything, its only shortcoming really stems from its paint. Maybe from its standing as well, but its paint really, I think, is where this figure could have done a lot better had they only darkened the gray. The gray is a little too light for my liking. The veining of the blue, I don't think stands out as well that if they had only darkened this closer to a black or a really, really, really dark gray, I think this is where the figure would have looked a lot better. Uh, the figure does stand. Uh, mileage may vary for how your figure stands versus my figure. Again, a talking point. I'm glad that Diamond Select didn't put the hinge on the hind leg. Okay, it's the last time I'm going to mention that. But that's crucial, because had they put the hinge on the back of the leg, we would have had an even tougher time getting the poor uh, kaiju drone to stand upright. By removing that and only having its hinge in its ankle and in its knee has really benefited the figure more than it actually has worsened it. So I'm glad that they removed that, or if maybe they never had any intention of putting that hinge in the hind leg. Okay, that is the last time I'm going to say that. Benefits definitely the figure, at least from standing it. Standing again, mileage may vary. You may have a better time standing the figure, but again, it all kind of boils down to the same thing. Spread the legs to get them into a desired look that you want, and then just kind of get your hands in there and flatten off the feet. As long as the feet are flat on the surface that you're displaying the figure in, you shouldn't have any or haven't too much of a problem getting the figure to stand upright. Uh, you don't have to stand too long. How's that? That's probably not the greatest of segues. Yeah, I, I've. I've had better. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about that right now. I've, I've had a lot better. You don't have to stand too long. We'll still run with this. You don't have to stand too long to find this at your local comic book store. Some good news. Okay, everybody's getting where I was going with this. Some good news. You should be able to find all the new wave of Pacific Rim Uprising figures at your local comic book stores. They should have them stocked right now. Henceforth, you shouldn't have to stand too long in a comic book store. And it, and it goes back to the hinge and the hind leg. Okay, that is the last time I'm going to mention this. Today we were having a look at the new Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising. This was the Kaiju drone. A neat looking figure could have been a little bit better executed, I think, with the paint. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. My friends, my followers, my colleagues on the interweb. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And while you're also at it, why not hit that little bell notification? I don't know if it actually does anything. It might just be for fun. Some way Google just said, hey, you know what? Why don't we just put something down there and tell them that they have to ring it? Does it actually do anything? Ha <laughs> you fool. No, it doesn't do anything. It does absolutely nothing. But we're going to see if the sheep click on the bell notification. And sure enough, here's this sheep's telling you guys, hit that bell notification to hopefully guarantee that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do, and I'll see you next time.